Hi everyone, my name is Nate Labity. I'm the Sales Engineering Manager with Exabeam. Today I'm going to be talking about two different methods of ingesting data via Apache NiFi and outputting that as syslog. However, before I do that, if you find this video useful, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. So as I mentioned, we're going to be walking through two different components of NiFi. The first is ingesting NetFlow and then sending that out as syslog. The next is ingesting a CSV and then outputting that as syslog. Two common scenarios you'll find in environments as far as log ingestion goes. Um, as far as NetFlow, most people have that in their environment already, whether it's running on a switch, whether it's something that could be enabled on the router, um, some firewalls can do it. There's lots and lots of ways of getting NetFlow data. It comes in various formats too. So we've got NetFlow version 5, NetFlow version 9, IPFix, SFlow. They all have their pros and cons um, in different formats too. But for simplicity, we're going to talk about ingesting NetFlow version 5. In this case, I have it coming off of the firewall for my home network. Now, as far as NiFi goes, this was trivial to set up. Uh, this is running on Ubuntu 20.04. I set up NiFi from the guide on their site. There was another one I found that walked through a couple steps around that was setting up Java. But the install is extremely straightforward. I think it took all of five minutes to get this up and running. Right now, what we're looking at is the interface for NiFi. So you can see right now the canvas is blank. There's nothing on it. We don't have anything set up. So the first thing we'll want to do is set up a processor to listen for UDP packets. So NetFlow version 5 typically comes in on port 2055 UDP. So in this case, we'll add the listen UDP processor. There's two different ones that come up. The only one we need is this first one. We click add and it drops down to our canvas. There isn't much that we have to change for this. If we open this up by double clicking on it, the only thing we really need to set is the port. So we're going to put 2055. So we've got the firewall sending NetFlow on 2055 and we're receiving on the same port. All of these other, other settings here, you can leave alone. You don't have to change any of these. If we go over to settings here, same thing. There's nothing that really needs to be modified. I'll get into these terminating relationships in a second. It just tells it where to end the flow. So we could say, okay, if there's a failure here, just stop. Don't continue passing the data through the, uh, the stack we're going to create here. So in this case, we hit apply. You can see here there's a warning. It just means it's not connected to anything. There's really no start and stop at this point. So we have our UDP listener. The next thing we're going to add is our NetFlow converter. So if you drag a processor over again, all you have to do is type in NetFlow. And we can see parse NetFlow version 5. It's the one that comes up here. We're going to click Add and then drop this in our canvas. Now, the nice thing with this is we don't have to change anything. As soon as the data comes in and we connect it here, it knows how to parse out that NetFlow version 5 and convert it to JSON format. And then we can output that in whatever method we'd like. So the next step I'm going to do is connect these. All you have to do is drag the line down here. You can uh, configure various settings in here. So back pressure objects th threshold, it's basically a queue. So how many events we want to hold in if there's delays in processing or anything like that. You can also set up load balancing if you need to, how these events are prioritized. But in this case here, we're just going to stick with the de uh, defaults. We don't have to change anything. We click add, and now these two are connected. We can see this is happy. It's just stopped. It knows it has somewhere to go after it ingests that NetFlow data. However, parse NetFlow, same thing. It needs to go somewhere, and we need to tell it what to do with that. So the last one we're going to put in here is put UDP. We've got listen UDP, which ingests the packets, parse NetFlow, which converts them to J JSON, and then the put UDP one we'll put in here that outputs it somewhere else. So just like before, we drag a process over. We're going to say put UDP, click add, and now we have this on the canvas here. Now, there's not much to configure with this. We can double click on it. 
Um, we're going to say automatically terminate relationships here. This is the last step. So we're going to say whether it's a, a success, whether it's a failure, and the flow at this point as it goes through all these different components or processors we created. Now for properties, we just have to tell it where we're going to send it. So in this case, I have a host named Elastic I'm going to be sending it to. And then the port. Uh, typically, this would be 514. I've got a couple things running, so I've got this running on 1514. But in most instances, you would just be using 514. We click OK. We don't have to change either of these. And then we click Apply. So the last step, just like before, we're going to connect these up. So I'm going to say I only want to pass successful events here. If it's a failure or the original event, I don't want to pass it on. I only want to part, uh, pass along the successfully parsed events. We click Add, and we can see there's still a warning here. So going back to those terminating relationships under Settings, we want to terminate failure. So if there's some type of failure with the data, just drop it. And we don't care about the original event. We only want to pass out the parsed ones. So we're going to check these two, meaning stop if we hit either one of these. Click Apply. Now we have all three of these. The little red box here means it's disabled. We can right click on the dashboard, click Start, and all of these fire up. Now I've got my Kibana instance over here, so where Elastic's running. If all goes well, we should start to see data appear as it's received from my firewall. So in this case, we can see it came in. It's also parsed out as JSON or being sent as JSON. So let me stop this here so it doesn't keep refreshing on me. And we can see the basic details around this. The port, so 2055, the format, NetFlow version 5, destination address, source address, uh, octets. All of the information you expect from NetFlow is now coming in here. Again, it's in JSON format, so it's incredibly easy to parse. Um, if you do a, a native push to Elastic, it'll parse a lot of this out automatically. You don't have to set anything up. For the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through ingesting a CSV file through SFTP, converting that to JSON, then outputting that as syslog. Really common scenario around this that we see is things like performance reviews. HR might drop a file on a regular basis that contains scores for employees' performance reviews. Uh, people will want to use that for additional context around their users, with the idea being that somebody that performs poorly might be at higher risk for suspicious or abnormal or potentially risky behavior. So what we'll first do is walk you through what this file looks like, just to give you an idea of what I'm grabbing here. So if I bring up my SSH session, you can see I'm on this host, Red Shirt. This is the directory I'm in, temp app logs, which is where the file will get dropped. We do an LS, we can see we have this file name here. And this is important, I'll show you when we use the processor and why we're using this. So my idea when I put this together, application output, then something like a date stamp, then it ends in CSV. If we do a head on this file, so show me the top contents, we can see there's a header row. And again, this is important when we're converting to JSON, you'll almost always want some type of header row that identifies what these values are below it. So in this case, we have an ID, first name, last name, an email address, and a performance score. So that score of one through five that I've mentioned before. Now, just as an example here with one of these rows, we have an ID number, the first name, the last name, the email address, and the score. These are all randomly generated names, so apologies if this matches anybody's. Um, I just used the CSV generator to output these and use them in this particular example. So going back to NiFi, the very first thing we'll want to do is create our processor that we're using to fetch the data. So if I drag this over, the one we'll want is called get SFTP. So we can double click on that, drop it on the canvas here and then go into the settings. Now, you don't have to change anything here, but if we go over to scheduling, we'll want to change this run schedule. Uh, we don't want it fetching constantly. You'd ideally want this to match the interval that this file gets dropped, so once every 12 hours or once a day. We're going to set this for once every 60 seconds just because we're using this as an example. Now, if we go over to properties here, we'll tell it where to go to fetch this file. So in this case, 
we're going to put in that host name that I've mentioned before, red shirt. Ports 22, we don't have to change that. Username is fetch user. And normally I do better password security, but we're using this just as an example. We don't have to set the key. If you needed to use a key, you could. Uh, remote path though, we're gonna change that to match where this file gets dropped. So temp app logs, that same one I had used before. And then for the file filter regex, we're gonna put in a regex that matches that file name. The idea being with this here that if it were to get dropped on a regular basis, chances are the file format or the file name would follow a common scheme. I'm gonna copy and paste this one over. So file filter regex, we're gonna say, look at the beginning of the line, look for application output, a dash, and then a bunch of digits ending in .csv. We don't have to change any of the other settings. This just says our polling interval every 60 seconds. Uh, the one I am gonna change though is this delete original. You can set this and this is the default setting is after it fetches the file, it deletes it. I'm gonna keep it here because we're just using this for example purposes. So I'm gonna change this to false. We click apply and we're good on our get SFTP processor. The next one we're gonna do is our convert record processor. We're wanting to convert this file from a CSV over to JSON. So we're gonna look for convert record. We add that and we'll have to put it in a couple settings so it understands what to do with this file. So double click on this and we go into properties. There's only two values we have to change here but we'll set a couple things around that. Our record reader and our record writer. You can think of this as input and your output. For the record reader, we're gonna create a service. So select create new service and you've got a list of services here you can choose from. There's all different types of formats it supports, but we wanna do CSV reader. We can keep the name the same. I'm gonna do that in the next one too. We don't have to change that. Click create. And now we go to our record writer. So just like before, we're gonna create a new service and we wanna do a JSON set writer, or sorry, JSON record set writer. So I'll put this as JSON and click create. Now, if you click on any of these, either of these arrows, this is where you can configure those controller services. When I first do this, it's gonna ask me if I wanna save these. We say yes, and it brings us into the controller services. We can see this up here. By default, these are disabled. We're gonna configure them first, then enable them. So if you click here on the gear icon for the CSV reader, there's not a lot you have to change. As long as you have that header row, it's incredibly simple for it to understand what it is and now put it in different format. So all of this can stay the same. We're just keeping custom format for the CSV format. Value separator is a comma, which is what we had in that CSV. But the one I am going to change is this treat first line as header. So we want it to know that that very first line identifies the values that follow. So we change this to true and we click apply. For the JSON set record, I'm sorry, JSON record set writer, it's a mouthful. We can go to configure. We don't have to change anything here. It just works out of the box. You could set things like pretty print if you need to. All of these values are described if you mouse over the little question mark here. But again, we don't have to change anything here. What we will do is enable these. This little lightning bolt icon here, click that, say enable. It'll take a second for it to turn on and then you can close it. Same goes for the next one. We're gonna say enable and then click close. So we have both of these enabled in this convert record processor. I'm gonna move these up a little bit here so I have some more room. So get SF, sorry, get SFTP will fetch the file, convert record, converts it to JSON. Uh, however, if it does that on its own, it's gonna output one giant JSON file, which isn't what we want. We wanna break those into single events. So the next processor we'll wanna add is split JSON. There's not much to this, but it'll take that JSON output and split it into individual lines. Drag this over here. Uh, the one value we'll change is the JSON path expression. I'm just copying and pasting this from another screen here. This just says match any line, split the line. So 
essentially each line in that CSV is a, a syslog event coming over. Click apply. And the last one we'll want to add here is our put UDP, just like we did before. So send this out as a UDP packet. Couple settings on this one here. We're going to say for the host name, it's going to go to Elastic. And the port again is 1514. Typically this would be 514. And then these two can stay the same. And we click apply. Now what we're going to do is connect these up. I'll show you we're going to connect them and then we're going to tell it where to terminate those relationships um, in each one of these. So we'll connect them first just because that's easiest. We'll drag this over here. Success is our only option, so we're good. We can see this is happy now. It's got the, the icon indicating it stopped. We're going to drag this one over. The only one we want is success. So only send me success, <coughs> successful events. And then when we drag split JSON over to put UDP, we've got a couple more options here. We don't care about failures. We don't care about the original event, that giant JSON event. We just want the split events. And we could see here three of these aren't happy. That's because we have to tell it what to terminate. In this case here, we're going to terminate our failures. So just check off failures, meaning if it hits a failure, go on to the next one. For split JSON, we want to only pass along those splits. So we're going to say terminate failures and originals. Now this is happy. And put UDP, we're going to say terminate everything because this is the very last one. Hit apply. We can see these all have the icon saying they're ready to go. So at this point, we're good. So if we right click here and click start, we should see this go out and fetch that file, convert it to JSON, then output it to the syslog server. If I go here and do a refresh, we can see here there was out records, read write indicates something happened, and it spit out 10,000, which is how many entries I had in the CSV. If we go over here now, we can see that CSV is an event. So we've got our, I'm going to actually, let me stop this so it doesn't refresh on me again. So we can see here, it took that header and used that to identify all these in JSON format. So we have our ID, our first name, our last name, email address, and most importantly, that performance score that we can use. Just like before, it's in JSON format, so it's easy to parse out. So that concludes this part of the tutorial. Just like I mentioned at the beginning, pulling in a file in CSV format using SFTP, and then in the end, outputting, I'm sorry, outputting that file as syslog. And that's it. I hope you found this useful. Uh, please subscribe to our channel if you can, and be sure to like this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Thanks, and have a great day.